uh, can change your inhibitions, and that's the whole point of most of these mind control studies, to make the person do things that were normally against their principles. Yeah, and it's... But, you know, you know, go ahead, Jim. You know that, but on, on another point, though, it does seem like we're seeing um, more individuals that they're made, at least it seems to me that there is a subset of the population that does seem to be a little more resistant to the control mechanisms than others. And, um, and uh, you know, my personal opinion is that maybe that is uh, some of the group that's being avidly harassed uh, because maybe they, you know, they, they don't respond to the control mechanisms as well as, as most. Exactly. I think that's an excellent point. So they would uh, be targeted more, you're saying? They, they, would, if they know they can do it uh, to uh, a lot, 80% of the population, that's not of their interest. They want to focus on that 20%, what makes them resistant. And that can be both used uh, in analysis of, uh, in terms of warfare, how you make the culture resistant to these techniques in case we get in a war between Russia and China using just psychotronics. Uh, or it can be that they want to improve the weapons effectiveness, which is the majority, in my opinion, of the cases. Uh, and what better targets than those that may show resistance to mind control techniques. Okay, so those of you who are strong, especially if you have strong faith, I think uh, you see people with strong faith and they, they're able to discern, and this is another big question, the voice of God from the fake voice of God or the beamed-in voice of God. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's the, the problem that, on the one hand, faith does provide some a solid foundation for a person not to stray from, uh, but these new voice of God weapons that uh, you can imagine how useful and more that would be, you know, all it commands you to lay down your arms and you hear this inside your head. Right. And of course, it's the way God would talk to you. Um, and so in a way, faith is a double-edged sword. It can make people believe they're talking to an angel, demon, a god, uh, mm -hmm. using these weapons, or it can also ground them more to make sure that they're not tricked into doing the devil's work, so to speak. I got to warn them every day out there because we are, uh, you know, as much a spiritual broadcast as anything. But, uh, you know, today we're, we really want to get into the, you know, this. Uh, we really want to bring people up to date as to what they can do so they can then prepare themselves. I've been on all kinds of sites lately where I've seen things like, Tinfoil blankets and and tinfoil hats, believe it or not, and you know, I and I maybe it'll help, but I think in a way, um, gosh, I see a lot of people going to great lengths, almost insane lengths, to keep this stuff out of their rooms, out of their apartments, out of their houses. You know, it can drive a person to to to, to doing things that make him look mentally unstable. And that's the problem, Jeff. A tinfoil hat, the only thing it's going to help you get is a psychiatric diagnosis. <laughs> exactly. and, and, and there are other sites that say, look, if you've got this problem, if you're being electronically harassed or, you know, gang stalked on any, on any level, whether with, with, from, you know, other human beings to electronic, it all kind of goes together. The, I mean, because I have been a victim of this myself and I've been public about it, but there's two schools of thought. One, you be public about it, and that's a good way to get yourself tossed in the, in the loony bin. Of course, I've already been tossed in there, so it's, it's, like, it's, it's like that was – you know, when I, first was, was hara when I first became aware of organized stalking, I was like 17 years old, okay? And, um, you know, it was happening then in a more concrete way. I'd say more the gaslighting type way. Okay, and two times. One time, I wound up in an overdose in a in uh, the hospital at, on uh, where I was given LSD and um, and phenobarbital at, after the you know I was flipping out from the LSD and then phenobarbital and then wound up in a coma. And my heart actually stopped. I came back, but it was and who was doing it? These were people at uh, in the in the school that I was going to, and they and some kids that were there as students and one particular teacher this had to do with it's a long story i can't go into it now i'm another time for that testimony i don't want to take away from this show point is is you know it it happened to me and i guess i was targeted for death 
I was targeted to be in the mental hospital and then death. You know what I'm saying? I had both, you know, I'm suicidal. I was listed as a suicide. And then actually in the city where I, you know, grew up in LA, uh, I went back years and years later, had a long history of, of, you know, having to be dealt with by shrinks and all kinds of, you know, I mean, you know, I was a complete mess, but anyway, when I got back there and I ran into say an old friend, they said, you're supposed to be dead. I thought you were dead. We all knew you died then. So after that, the, the rumor went around that I had died. I didn't make it out of that uh, hospital. Okay, that's pretty... You know, I get, I get, I get a lot of emails from, from victims who are correspondents that, that think they're being targeted with the purposes of death. And yes, some TIs do commit suicide to get away from their torture. But all in all, and, and I'll, we get, we'll get Dr. Duncan's take on this, I yeah. really don't think that anyone is being specifically targeted with the expectation of them being killed, and mainly because this is experimentation, and, and dead guinea pigs aren't good to experiment mm-hmm. on. In my case, I don't think it was it, – back then, it was – you know what's really interesting? The other thing is that I knew all about you know uh, a Dr. West because I had to do- – <laughs> Back then, you know what I mean? I mean, he was kind of part of this whole plot. But anyway, that was a long time oh, ago. Yeah. That was a long time ago. He was the head of the neuropsychiatric or NPI at UCLA at the time. That's right. Jolie West, he was very much involved in all of this. Yeah, and one of, you know, so it, it, it's another story. I wanted to throw it out there to get your take on it. I've had, you know, it, it, it's, it's, um, it's a horrible thing. I want to ask you one other thing uh, for either one of you. There was a time in 2004, I believe, I was getting voice to skull, and I know who was d- doing it. It was someone doing it in a nearby ho- house, and it was the, um, the Navy fight song. And, and uh, the guy worked for Naval Intelligence or was ret- just retired, from, supposedly, from Naval Intelligence. Do so you find that to be uh, of any significance? Uh, here, here's my take on that. Uh, almost everybody that I've interviewed that has voiced the skull believes that it's coming from their neighbors. Okay. And, and so just using some street smarts, I would say that that's a trick. They want you to believe that it's a localized system. Uh, but while you're getting it, I bet you could jump on an airplane and fly randomly to another location, and you'd still be getting the voice of the skull. Um, so I think the, the neighbor is uh, just okay. a point of trickery, and that it's, it's not a localized weapon like that. It's just a guess. I mean, I guessed, you know, that was my guess. It wasn't that, and I'll tell you this, I couldn't get away from it, and it went on for about, you know, a couple of weeks, maybe a little longer, and then it went away. And I haven't had it since, but I'm just saying that was pretty, uh, pretty bad because like I say, it kind of, it was pretty loud. You know what I mean? It was, it wasn't like, um, you know, it was very annoying, put it that way and distracting. And, you know, if, if this went on day after day, it would drive you completely nuts. Oh yeah. Well, I've, heard from, I've heard from multiple victims in New Mexico that are hearing that, hearing music and hearing the Navy fight song specifically. So I think that is part of an operation that's being done there. Wow. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. John, for that, because uh, I've, I carried that since 2004, and I didn't know what to, you know, I didn't understand it. I, I, you know, I, there, there is a weapon system uh, that uh, Sierra Nevada Corporation is coming out with, and probably already has, uh, that's called Medusa, and it's for crowd control, and it uses the microwave hearing effect mm-hmm. at near ranges. And uh, basically, you can't plug your ears. You can't stop it. The the sound is being transmitted directly uh, to the inner ear through small heating vibrations of the brain. And this was written up uh, probably about four years ago that they were developing such a, a weapon. And and there is one kernel that says if you can transmit voices into the enemy's head, I will find a way to talk them to their death. Uh, so you can imagine what oh. a useful weapon system that would be. Okay. Now, how, either one, how do they, we, we understand, you know, part of it is to choose stronger victims, you know, but, but when they want to experiment on this stuff, how do they choose their targets? Go ahead, Dr. Hall. 
Well, I mean, I'll give you my opinion on it, and I think it's pretty much random. I mean, if you look back historically at the way this research started, most of it was done through front companies um, or or masked as legitimate research through universities. But at least having identified some of the perpetrator groups, you know, with our research, what it appears to me is that the technology is being released to certain, you know, if you want to call them criminal groups or people that are being allowed to have the technology, with basically a carte blanche open-ended invitation to victimize whoever they want to victimize for whatever reason. And I think that's how the powers that be that are actually um, taking down the data on how well it works are achieving their um, their randomness to their experimentation. I, I think the, the individual groups that are they're being allowed to possess it are being told, you know, victimize whoever you want to victimize. Because if you look across the board, I mean, it's it's certainly random. I mean, there's not, you know, it's not one particular racial group. It's not one particular political group. I mean, most of it are common people, housewives. I mean, it's not just whistleblowers and, and political activists. It's, you know, most of the victims are just everyday middle-class people. Okay. That, I have another question here. Um, can they also hear your thoughts while they are in, implanting their programming or while they're beaming you with something? Can they hear, do they get feedback? Absolutely. That's part of the technology that makes it so unbelievable. Is during uh, hive mining, it's called, uh, that's uh, the very thought processes are bi-directional. Uh, and so they, they, you have to create a feedback loop in order for uh, this technology to, to work. So the answer is a solid yes. Okay, they can read my thoughts then uh, to a certain extent uh, during that process of beaming me. They're going to get back some kind of data from me, whether and, and it would be involuntary on my part. That's right. That, that's right. In fact, you can even uh, probe someone's dreams to get a more uh, subconscious uh, profile of their psychology. Okay, that is truly um, right. horrific. Okay. okay. That, it, well, you can understand why this is so top <laughs> secret. Uh, uh, the very concept of free will is destroyed. We've been debating this for thousands of years. And to have that, that argument finalized, well, all of Western philosophy, and from crime and punishment to religion, mm-hmm. relies on this concept of free will. They can't just announce it and then say, oh, by the way, we've been running torture experiments on people all around the world. So they're going to be sure to keep this classified okay, for well, as long as we can. All right, let's look at the news. Uh, Egypt, could they intensify the riots with the, that gear that, that they have? Absolutely. And in fact, that's a, a, um, a major war strategy is to try to get other countries to fight each other. Uh, and so you want to intensify the fighting to, to wage war of attrition. And then, of course, you could use a political maneuver, say that we're going to send in troops to occupy them to help stop the fighting. Uh, mm. There are a whole bunch of reasons you'd want to do that. In 1970s, there was an army intelligence officer that came forward and said the Russians were beaming us with uh, a cyclotronic signal all over, and we started sending the same one back to them, but the signal was meant to subdue the population, keep them from becoming violent, uh, and calm them down as if we were the aggressors. Uh, So it can be used in either form, to calm a country's population down uh, or to incite violence as well. Uh, another uh, colonel said that uh, with this particular radio frequency, he could uh, instill white hot anger in the subject. Well, that, that would be proof that they already have that technology um, and have been, and of course, would be using it in a warfare arena. Yeah, and every, everywhere else. I mean, could they do something like, uh, uh, I read a, a term, mental rape? And the idea of one of these crimes would be in, in that kind of environment, you know, used with uh, a satellite with for audio and visual. Could uh, scientists, writers, uh, military 